Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Monday, February 13th edition of uh, The Morning Buzz. Again. I'm Dick Wolf. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I'm Tina Shane. We were here earlier, but we weren't, we were the silent type, <laughs> uh, as I understand it. And sorry about that. But uh, we should have our voices now. And if you liked it previously without the sound, go ahead and just write something on Facebook because Tina is following, uh, following along <laughs> here. And we'll see what you thought about the previous uh, version of our, mm -hmm. of our morning show. The silent movie. And Today in History. Can we go to Today in History? Yes, let's do that. Okay. Galileo uh, was on trial for uh, heresy uh, by the Pope. Pope Urban. Uh, that's an odd name. But anyhow, he died in prison, or he died in his home. And um, Sorry. <laughs> there he is with his telescope. He won a no uh, didn't win a Nobel Prize. That's our next guest that won the Nobel Prize, <laughs> Galileo. Uh, house arrest, it wasn't bad. He pled guilty yeah. so that he could uh, just stay in his house for the rest of his life. He only lived eight years after that. The other one is uh, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, who uh, won a Nobel, Nobel Prize for peace. And on this date in 1905, February 13th, uh, he told the New York Republicans that racial equality was a priority for him. Obviously, he didn't bring it home. Uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson gave it a get-go in the 60s. And there's judges, jury is still out on whether they brought it home. We still have yeah. racial uh, in, uh, inequality in our country. So, And that is up there that... That wasn't the weather. Uh, nope. <laughs> no, <laughs> nope. The weather's coming up. Ah, I gotcha. Yeah. So that's our Today in History. It also was a bombing of Dresden uh, in Germany. That was a revenge bombing by the United uh, uh, Front, the Allies. And uh, they d decimated the city. And Kurt Vonnegut made it even more famous in his book, <laughs> Slaughterhouse Five. Whoops, I'm so sorry. The United, uh, I'm trying to watch the comments here and, and accidentally turn on oh, my sound, but you can hear us now. So yeah, good. <laughs> we can hear us now. You sound really good, Tina. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, Michael took the weather back down now. He got tired of waiting on us, but here we there go. We it's go. 32 degrees. Um, it's a little chilly out, but it's pretty nice. Um, really sunny. In fact, it's uh, so sunny, my, my 10 year olds ask me why. It was cold outside because it was sunny. It was sunny. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm sitting here in a sweater, and you're here in a T-shirt. I've been hot all day, and usually I don't like cold. Um, but this morning, I was happy to go outside because, for whatever reason, I've just I've been hot since you know ever since last night. You're um, uh, you're becoming acclimated. <laughs> is what that is. I must is. be. Um, but the high today is going to be 55, so so the sun will warm us up. Uh, it looks like it's going to be. Uh, at least for the next couple of days, pretty mild temperatures, which we've had all winter long. I know. Well, you know, I feel very blessed to live where I live. And, of course, I'm wearing the sweater. I'll, I won't take it off till the 4th of July either, probably. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, you the winter wheat was looking really, really pretty out. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. I take the old Estel uh, uh, drive highway when I when I drive around and rather than 41a mm -hmm. and I get to go through uh, well it's alternate sometimes it's wheat country sometimes it's corn country sometimes it's pea country well there's canola too isn't there isn't that the I, really you know, pretty yellow I, I, they're out on Knights Church Road <laughs> I don't see any canola yeah. on the old Estel Road at least they haven't put it in there yet well I remember um, when I used to work for the Herald Chronicle you know and I've traveled around the, the county quite a bit then and, and I had to ask someone what the, the large fields of yellow were that was really pretty and so I didn't know that was canola. Canola, yeah. Um, um. But um, we, we want to, we, we brought to you earlier, um, last year I guess, not this year, um, Ed Burns was talking to us about the drought situation yeah. and, and so we want to get back with him and, and see uh, how that's looking because we've had some rain. Um, in the month since we spoke with him. So That's we'll, right. we'll get another agriculture update out to you. Um, we got some meetings coming up tonight. We've Nick. got some meetings uh, coming up. Actually, before that, do you want to get a road report? Oh, yeah, let's do We've that. We've got Johnny Woodall kind of standing by here. Uh, this is primitive stuff. Yeah, uh, this is like uh, Groundhog Day. We're going to make him do it again. <laughs> <laughs> we had John on earlier. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Well, we'll see how he answers his telephone. John Woodall. 
Well, good morning, John Dick Wolf and Tina Shang here with the Morning Buzz. Uh, we're we're going to give you another shot and see if you can't talk better this time than last time. <laughs> well, well, you know, I, 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 I got to thinking, maybe it was me that just cut everything off and everything went dead or something. I don't know. No. Uh, <laughs> good to hear from you, Dick and Tina. Hello. Um, hello. But, yeah, Dick, I'm, I'll probably get back and just start all over again. Uh, we are working over on Mason Everett Road today. Uh, that's over in the northwest end of the county, uh, off of 121. Uh, we're over there doing some tree trimming and stuff on the road over there. Mason Everett, we actually star fired it up and get it ready to uh, tar and shell back. Uh, also, I think I told you about the long arm being up in the Oak Grove area up there. Uh, just if you see the tractor out up there with the lights flashing and everything with the long arm, just, just stay back away from it a little bit and <laughs> get them ready to work. So uh, they're trying to get that done. Also, Dick, we're down on uh, Campbell Lane down in Huntland uh, that goes over from 120 uh, or from John Hunter Highway uh, back over to Highway 64. Right. Uh, we're doing the same thing with it that we've done with Mason Everett. And Dick, one of the reasons why we're having to do this, a lot of these roads are older roads. It's probably 40, 50 years old. And the tar and chip just wore out on them. So we're having the potholes is the bad. We can't patch them. So we're just going to fire them up, putting them back down for a while and, and resurfacing them. So uh, you'll be seeing a lot of a lot of that going on. And also, Dick, uh, like I told you, I was out down the Holland area uh, each one of the road commissioners uh, is given lists now of roads that they want to put on the roads program for this next year. And that's what I've been doing is out trying to get estimates and stuff on them. So uh, a lot of those. And when we have all of them nailed down, I'll be able to give you the roads. And uh, that way people will know which ones we're going to be working on. That sounds great. Uh, yeah. Any more roads to report on? Because I have a question to ask you if I can. Okay. You can go ahead and ask me. Uh, but I, I can tell you this, that we was talking about the weather just a little bit while ago. We've only used 25 uh, tons of salt this year, which is a-okay to me, and I hope it stays sort of that way. But, you know, my old daddy told me one time, he said, son, said it ain't quit snowing until it snows on the buttercups. And I think I told you that about years ago. <laughs> and, and it comes true. And buttercups is in full bloom right now, so let's just hope we don't get a great big one. Yes, let's hope that. Um we talked with uh, Representative David Alexander the other day. We haven't put that interview up here yet on uh, on the buzz, but it will go up this week. Um, uh -huh. the, uh, he wanted to talk, of course, about the gasoline tax, and he uh -huh. said under the uh, under the money that would be raised by the governor's uh, tax that Franklin County would get. Uh, I think he said uh, eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars. Uh, close to eight hundred thousand. It was seven, uh, seven hundred ninety something thousand. Yeah. Like to be exact, but uh, yeah. And and Dick, you know that's that's one of the things uh, Representative Alexander and a lot of us have been working on. Of course, I think he's been trying to work on another funding uh, issue with it. Uh, I don't think he really liked the gas tax, but uh, like I told him, you know, the the biggest thing about the gas tax is it's not been raised since the nineteen eighty. Uh, our gas tax level that we are receiving uh, is, is flatline, Dick, and uh, that's the biggest thing that's hurting us. But of course, a lot of these other things that everybody's trying to put together and pass besides what the governor's uh, proposal is, uh, we're not for sure if the counties are in, uh, in on that. So the gas tax, we do share part of the gas tax with TDOT. And a lot of these other uh, things that a lot of people are proposing, I hope that they don't forget about the counties because uh, you remember back uh, several years ago uh, under the Obama administration where they sent out a lot of money to uh, a lot of the states and stuff. Well, the counties wasn't even in on that. And everybody kept saying, well, you know, they're giving money to the counties and stuff too. And they actually thought they was, but they're not because the counties don't receive federal funds. Uh, we were just fortunate enough, we got a grant not too long ago over on UTSI Road, which is, uh, it was an enhancement grant to uh, government property, which UTSI Road connects off of uh, 41A back to IDDC property. And uh, we were just fortunate that we got that, we found that grant and, and applied for it. So, uh, you know, very seldom do we ever even get any federal money. Uh, so, you know, I just hope that they all understand, you know, that that money, that 800000 that we get could wind up being a zero. And, you know, we're in desperate need of that money. And that's on top of what we're getting right now. So, you know, that's that's nearly six miles of road paved. Uh, if you go tar and ship, that's a whole lot more miles of road. So, you know, I just hope whatever they do that they, they get it all worked out. And uh, But I did tell David, you know, Dick, and I, I don't know how y'all feel about it or anything, but this is the first time I've ever seen where they actually went in and, and did a, a, putting in a tax where they're giving tax off from another area, like 
food and stuff. And uh, that was really surprising to me that they even did that, because usually when they tax, they want to tax and tax more and tax more, but that's not what they did. Uh, but the good thing, like I told David, uh, we were talking about the other day is, is that, you know, if you look at the food tax, you know, you and I pay that when we go to the grocery store. So if we get some of that off, me and you get that off. Uh, with the gas tax, uh, me and you are sharing with other people that's coming through our state buying gas. So, you know, they're sort of paying a little bit on it, too. So, you know, we could actually be gaining a little bit by having that offset uh, from what I from what I looked at. And, and I may be wrong, but I, I think what they've showed us, what the governor showed us uh, when we were up there working with that, that uh, it, it would probably help, you know, us as individuals, you know, being able to get those other taxes off. Yeah, even though they're coming off of, uh, of food, would that be a, would that be a permanent thing? Uh, and is the eight hundred thousand dollars that the county's looking at does that include some of these sales tax revenues? Well, what what it is on the, on the eight hundred thousand is off the gas tax. It okay, only that's come off the gas tax. That's, that's what I thought. Eight hundred thousand would come now. Right. If they go in and do something different, uh, my question was, and, and like I asked some of the others. Is the county highway department's going to be guaranteed a part of that money? Because everything that runs through has to go through TDOT that we get off a of gas tax. So that's what I'm trying to figure out because I do know definitely that if it goes into gas tax, the counties will share part of that money, that revenue that comes in off the gas tax. If not, we, we really don't know where we stand at it. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I had questions on and uh, would like to get some answers on. But I was going to go right directly to that question and ask you if there's some kind of a, I don't want to call it really a bias, but rural communities, especially like Franklin County, we don't have shoulders on our roads, we don't have striping, we don't have those electric reflectors on our roads, or lane divisions, and we kill, we kill several people in Franklin County every year. Uh, because of bad roads. Uh, I've talked with uh, Chris Guess at the Sheriff's Department about this. You know, we had 1,200 and some odd uh, accidents uh, a year before last uh, on our roads. So uh, that's a lot of wrecks for uh, the county drivers to face. Well, you know, Dick, that's true. And, and, you know, I don't know where the wrecks, what they revolved around, you know, according to what happened and all that situations. It was on each one of them. But I can tell you this. We, as the county, have limited funds that we can put on roadways, and usually we work, we try to work very hard with the sheriff's department and them and, and THP. Uh, if they find an area that they're having problems in, we try to go in and help uh, help fix whatever we can in these areas. And we do have several of them that comes up, you know, during the year. And we have. If you've been out in Franklin County now, you're seeing a lot of reflectors going up. Uh, you're seeing a lot of the new signage. Uh, that's being put up in curves and chevrons oh. and, and you'll see these posts that have these big bright uh, yellow looking reflectors going up the post and stuff and what that's trying to do is brighten those areas up to where uh, the traffic will be able to see them when they come into these places um, and, and we are doing a lot of that but, but Dick it costs much to do that you know I wish we could put them up on every road but we can't because of the cost of uh, just one of those chevron signs just to sign alone is about a hundred you know, you take and, the county as big as Franklin County and seven hundred miles of road, and we put them up there where we would be broke before we ever even started. So. Well, those signs are easy enough to see, but what I'm looking at is you get a rainy night, and you're not going to see the road that you're driving on. And, and you're not, Dick. And, and what, that's one of the things that we've been fighting, and uh, uh, Commissioner 
uh, Magby has been talking about for years is once they change this reflectorization in this uh, lines instead of painting uh, that they did, and they went to a waterborne paint, then that was because of the environmental. Uh, it don't stay on the roads. You can't see it. It's, <laughs> it's hard to see. That's a, uh, it's a catch-22, isn't it? Johnny. The bad thing is, for older people like me and <laughs> the ones that get to where they can't see real good at night, it's real hard to drive around at night time. I catch myself now trying to, you know, see uh, and having to strain a lot harder to see at night time traveling, and it, and it is. But, uh, you know, I don't know where it's all going to end, but funding, you know, is one thing that uh, it can either make you or break you. And, you know, we need all the revenue we can get right now because we have actually just been on a, a thin dime, you know, budget. You know, just trying to make ends meet. For a, for a long have, time. And, and if we have to go another two or three years, uh, Dick, it's not going to be good. And, you know, I think I think that the House and the Senate both sees that something's got to be done for transportation. Uh, it's just a matter of what they're going to do. But I, I just hope they don't leave the counties out of this. Yeah. Johnny, can you tell yeah. us um, what the what your budget has been in the past Um and, and how many miles of road that you can pave with that budget? Well, you know, Tina, our budget consists of a lot of things. And, you know, our biggest part of that budget is payroll. And a lot of people in insurance and all that, people don't realize how much insurance costs, how much uh, employees cost. And, you know, and, and the thing about this, we're not overpaying our employees. I think if you go look at our employee salary and based on surrounding counties and other places, you'll see that we're probably closer to the bottom than we are at the middle or the top. So yeah. um, even with cities compared to cities around our communities here. So you're yeah. going to see that we're not overpaying our employees. But uh, when I come in in 1994, uh, October, I actually took the budget that Franklin County had, and it was a little bit just over, uh, it was right at $2 million, a little over $2 million, thousand dollars when I come in. Uh, if you go look at our budget right now, uh, we gained about probably around 400000 over 22 and a half years. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, back in, in 22 and a half years, you look at the rate of the inflation rate that's gone up, even at the peak of when we were really before gas ever went back down. And uh, you can see what the amount was. A mile of road back when I first come here, town, we were buying asphalt per ton laid in place at $16.25. At one time, back four years ago, we were giving nearly $100 a ton. Oh, so, you yeah. know, you're looking at that. You're looking at that spike that, you know, we can't recover. And so what happens is it's just like you at home and, and me and you and Dick taking a look at our checkbooks, you know, when we only have a straight line income coming in and we have a rise that actually goes beyond what we can handle, you have to start cutting stuff. And so where we started that was employees because that was where our highest part of our uh, money goes to. And so we went from actually from uh, 36 employees when I come here, we're down to 23 now, and that's counting myself as a secretary. So, um, what I you know, that's... You, you have to start cutting, and you have to do that. I mean, you've got to make your budget meet, you know, what you've got to do. And, and the county has been good to us here at the highway department uh, through the administrations over the last 20 something years that I've been here. The county has given money to the highway departments to do some work, but we had to pay for part of that. And and that's that's one of the things that hurt us is because when they would give us like $6 million, we had to pay half of that back. The county paid half, we paid back. So we still had to take money out of our uh, funds to take and offset that. The last bond issue that the county did for us, we didn't have to do that. And so you can start seeing a little bit more construction work going on now because we do have a little bit of funds uh, that we can operate with to do maintenance and stuff with now. And that's that's what you're seeing a lot of these roads being done now. With. So what I, what I was trying to, to get... You just to say, I guess, so that people understand is uh, how much it takes to pave a mile of road. I think, if I heard you correctly, if if we get the eight hundred thousand, if they do the gas tax and you get the eight hundred thousand, did you say that will only pave six miles of road? Yes, that's that's approximately what it'll be, somewhere right around six to seven miles, right in that range. And, and it's important how asphalt goes up and down too. You right. know, that, that has a variance on that. Uh, Tina, it usually takes us right around by the time we get done straight. 
striping, putting the shoulder stone down and completing the road, that's that's doing everything with it. We usually wind up anywhere in the range between a hundred to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars a mile. So a hundred 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 thirty thousand uh, dollars for a mile. And how many miles of road again are there in Franklin County? Uh, asphalt road is probably a little over three hundred right now. Right. Okay. And that- then we have torn chip roads, which is right around two hundred and sixty something miles, and then we have gravel roads too that we're trying to keep up to. Right. Okay. Thank you. That I just wanted you to to say to the people so that they understand. Um, you know. Your budget for the county is not eight hundred thousand dollars a year, obviously. So you can't even do six miles a road yeah. a year. Um, so well, that's that's that the reason we that see. Actually, that extra eight hundred thousand uh, dollars, Dickinson would give us that much extra that we would be able to do that year because that's above what we're getting right now. So, and also remember, in Franklin County, we have a query that we operate because we still do have gravel roads, and we, and we have to operate that. And uh, that takes up quite a bit of a budget, too. You know? Right. Okay. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah. And Michael still wants to uh, <laughs> still wants to know when you're going to blow things up out there at the quarry. <laughs> by the way. Well, you know, we grew up not too long ago, but you know, <laughs> it's, uh, they're crushing up there every day right now. Hopefully, before long, uh, before they get ready to go out and, and start uh, mowing and stuff, Dick, I'm going to call you and, and get and invite you and Tina up to come visit with us and actually see what a blast is. We, we love to see things blow up. <laughs> John Woodall, road superintendent for Franklin County. Thank you, John, for the report. Thank you, Athena. Have a good day. Thank you all, and thank you all for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. So he's, he's got his hands full out there. Uh, and it's interesting to see that he's, he seems to he seems pretty good with taking some money out of sales tax revenues and putting. I I look forward myself to watching this uh, David Alexander uh, piece. It was uh, interrupted several times. We did it at his business place, and so he kept having to stop and uh, go rent things, uh, which is what he does at Reliable Rental. So. Well, I'm not sure that we even mentioned the David Alexander interview because we're we're on repeat here where we were on earlier and we didn't have sound. But we have a we have a couple of different interviews. Yes, uh, coming up, <laughs> including the David Alexander. Well, interview. you did an interview with Christine Hopkins. I did on the yeah. uh, rural Tennessee reentry rural program. Re-entry. Thank you. I you were trying it. to keep me. Excited. I can say it. She can't say rural <laughs> reentry program. I can't say World of Warcraft either. Unless oh, I think about yeah. it. <laughs> yes, my lord. <laughs> And uh, also, Tim Fuller. Mm-hmm. I uh, spent some time with Tim uh, talking about the uh, the new jail. That's a, a almost a permanent topic on him. The county is under a warning from the uh, state association on on how we run our prisons, saying that uh, we've got too many inmates in our jail, and. Um, and they keep arresting people, so they need a bigger jail as opposed to All right. some other thing. And, and there's the Sheriff Fuller interview. Uh, there's actually going to be the interview that you're talking about, but then we're going to have a couple of shorter pieces um, from other topics that you spoke to him about, including his uh, recent uh, recognition that he had in Washington, D.C. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. He's on the board of directors of the National Sheriff's Association, right. and he's former a uh, former officer of that association. Right. So, yeah. so they, mu- they must like the Tennessee style <laughs> up there in, uh, in association world, wherever and, that is. And you mentioned, um, you know, part of the the reason we're looking at jail expansion is because we keep arresting people. Um, and and despite uh, we talked to the interview that we did with Christine. Hopkins is on the rural reentry program, and our recidivism rate in in our jails have been reduced dramatically through this program. I mean, so even despite having this program in place and and you know getting our recidivism rate down, we still are seeing an overcrowding in in the jails. So um, that the interview with Christine Hopkins is is very long, um, probably about forty minutes. We'll put that up later today, probably. But we will go in and timestamp it so that you can see the different um, subjects that we talk about. It's just a large program, and we kind of got a little uh, carried away. Christine's very passionate um, about the program and about the people that she helps. Um, and and know, that so. fits in with the Sheriff Tim Fuller because uh, Christine Hopkins' work is to keep uh, inmates from coming back to prison mm-hmm. by reducing that recidivism mm-hmm. rate 
uh, they they leave and then they go into their community and they have jobs and they reunite with their families and theoretically anyhow they live happily ever after <laughs> and they contribute to you know to society right. and um, it, it's interesting that uh, you mentioned Sheriff Fuller Christine tells us in the interview that uh, one of the reasons that she is doing what she does here in Franklin County is because she heard Sheriff Fuller speak years ago and one of the things that he said is that the answer is not to uh, lock people up and throw away the key. And so she knew that he was of the same mindset that she was. And her history, um, you know, her background is in um, social work. And so, yep. uh, you know, she knew that she had a sheriff that, that was at least, you know, of the same mindset that she was in terms of, of a reentry program and, and trying to rehabilitate as opposed to locking them away. So that's kind of how this all started. And the program here in Franklin County has, uh, you know, Christine has helped Coffee County, Grundy County, several other counties yes. have, have um you know, made their own reentry programs now, and she's helped them with getting that starting and finding funding. Um, we talked uh, a little bit before about the funding for this. Initially, it was how much? A million two was the million two grant? was the original <coughs> grant, and they rolled back five million dollars in benefits from the million two investment. So, and and only the first two years did did they have? And it's been around for nine years now, but only the first two years the county matched matched grants and since then Christine has been able to find the funding to fully fund with the exception of um, you know the county's been really supportive of the program they give uh, give them office space and that kind of thing so that, that doesn't have to come out of their budget but beyond that it really is a kind of a self-sufficient program yes and uh, and her work uh, and she is also one of the instrument the instrumental uh, people in getting the uh, T Tennessee Technology Center located here in Franklin County the Technology Center essentially is a much larger version of what she's doing at the jail annex uh, for uh, local inmates. So uh, she uh, and she does say that uh, even though the original application to the state got bounced back, uh, we didn't get those funds. Uh, she has found other sources of revenue, and we expect to hear from her soon. We do. She mentioned that. it. She said that she would get back with us hopefully in a few weeks. Um, she's very tenacious, so she's uh, not going to take no for an answer. Uh, uh, she's uh, going to go out and find it somewhere else. Uh, she will beguile you with that <laughs> smile, I'll tell you. She doesn't use muscle, but she uh, she can be persuasive. <laughs> and so um, the, re the reentry uh, interview will be up later today, and at some point this week we'll have Sheriff sure Fuller pieces up. And um, one of the things that Sheriff um, that he talked about was really wanting to get this into this year's fiscal budget, um, the jail renovation, so that yes. we can get started on that. The uh, RFP has gone out, and it's due back in uh, mid-March, I believe. Okay. And uh, so the request for proposal will have an actual dollar figure. Uh, Tim's been very reluctant to to talk about money. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk about money. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that he said um, in the interview is that he's he wasn't he didn't want to. to to say too much because he's waiting on bids to come in and so right. I think that was kind of one of the things that he hesitated about but um, we will hopefully we're waiting for the plans to come to us so that we'll be able to attach those to the interview and you'll be able to see the jail plans um, so hopefully we'll have all of that together either today or in the next couple of days for you um, so you can see what it looks like they, it, they actually it was pretty smart when they built this when they built this particular jail which replaced an awful county jail I mean it was awful <laughs> Uh, they um, they they built for a double capacity, so they've got uh, uh, they stubbed off the utilities and the wiring and the plumbing and all of those uh, things that are so necessary. They don't have to do it all new in the new facility. They just have to add on to what they've already got. So it's yeah. And I think we need to say um, that this is not a new jail. This will be um, added on to the added current on. jail. Right. Uh, we had when we were at the sheriff's office. We had a gentleman say, "Where's a new jail?" And the sheriff, you know, was was quick to point out that it's not, not a, new a new facility. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Dick, let's uh, let's we have some meetings coming up tonight. Yes, uh, we do. With the health, insurance, retirement, and welfare committees meeting at five fifteen. That's in the county courthouse on the on the main floor. Uh, Board of Education is meeting at five thirty. Mary Sharp School. Uh, and they're going to, uh, David Stewart, a uh, local attorney, uh, is going to speak, and I believe his point of view is going to be in support of two 
smaller schools rather than one large consolidated he's school. Citing, so I think he's citing safety concerns. Um, well, with, he's, with yeah, the, uh, you know, the, he's, And we've heard this from other people as well. Yeah. Um, and then the Deckard board meeting. Oh, you'll want to watch this. This <laughs> is where Mayor Robin Smith is going to, uh, well, I don't know what he's going to do. Now that he's under the threat by the state, uh, it may be that the board will elect to cancel its resolution number 400, which would have raised water rates, and restart the process all over again because there are uh, questions regarding the first meeting that was held in which there was absolutely no discussion of the water rates. No one had ever heard of this resolution before at all. It just comes up to the Board of Mayor and Alderman and Deckard, and they get a motion and a second. There's no discussion. All those in favor, all those opposed. And bang, that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. So the state uh, uh, ethics, uh, not ethics, excuse me, the Open Trump Meetings Trump. Office, yeah, you've talked to them, but they say that, that, that what? What does that mean when they don't talk about it? Well, generally it means that they've talked about it before in private probably, which is a violation of Open Meetings Act. Um, and so uh, we're not sure what will happen. On, I, they're supposed to, before they got this letter, um, I think the plan was to, to do the second reading of this Resolution. Second reading tonight. And then and the third on Thursday, the 16th, I think. Um, yes. So we'll see how that goes, and, and we'll be there uh, hopefully live. We're doing the Board of Education meeting live at 530. Um, hopefully that will end early enough for us to get over and set up at the Decker meeting and do that live. If not live, we will upload it um, as soon as we possibly can from the, you know, after it's finished tonight. But uh, we certainly are going to try to be there to bring that to you live um, tonight at 7 o'clock. So, uh It'll be interesting. So we've got plenty to do, and if you want to be an active <laughs> citizen, you've got plenty to do. I hope you have a really great day. We're not uh, I think we'll end up think what? <laughs> We're not finished. Oh, I'm finished. <laughs> I'm going to have coffee. What have you got to say? <laughs> well, I just want to let everyone know um, if you check on our Facebook page, we have uh, the calendar for the General Tennessee General Assembly, so you can see what's going on there. We'll try to make sure we keep those up to date every day. But if you follow the link um, to the General Assembly. General Assembly page, you can you can check out everything that's going on. They have the calendar well in advance. You can see all of the topics that will be discussed, and they actually have live video of, of that, whatever's going on in the Senate and the House floor. You can watch it live. And many of the committee meetings as and, well exactly. are, uh, are also listed there. Um, yeah. uh, Tennessee uh, has, uh, has won praise for its website and its interaction so that you can watch various meetings. You can watch House action, Senate action. So if you uh, want to get more engaged in what the General Assembly people are up to, I know they've got a number of really interesting <laughs> interesting bills went up this morning. I don't know if I want to get into those right now. Oh, that's when I'm having coffee. Yeah, You're talking. Well, well there's a, you know, the, this is, that's a great component of, of the website is to be able to go and watch these live, live but probably more important um, aspect of the website. And there's also some really great apps. We've shared a few of those with you again. And I'll try to compile a list of, of apps and resources for you to to go out so that you know what's going on because what you really need to know is what's happening before they get to the Senate floor <laughs> so that you can have your voice heard prior to them going in and making decisions. Uh, so we'll try to, you know, to give you all the tools that you could possibly need to, to, uh, to take that kind of action. Uh, also, Dick, and I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot, we may have to look it up, but uh -oh. uh, <laughs> the Republican uh, women have several things going on, do they not, that we we're going to list yes, later? Yes, and, and <laughs> did we not put those on the website because I don't remember them? I don't think <laughs> we did. Um, if we did not, we will we will get those up. Also, the, the um, Democratic women have some things going on. There's some really interesting um, things going on in Swanee with some groups that are that are, again, they're taking action. Um, you know, they disagree with things, or they, they want to have their voice heard, and so they are, um, you know, they're, they're meeting, and they're making these things happen. And I think the group in Swanee, one of the things that they're really pushing for is a town hall meeting with Scott Nagerlay. Um And so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, they'll keep us informed, and, and if it's, you know, in the vicinity of us being able to make it out, we'll, we'll be there, too. And one of the things we'll post is that Scott Nagerlay, the representative, is going to attend um, Iris Rudder's party for the Republican women. Oh, He's yes. going to crash the party. 
but he can get away with that. He's a popular guy yeah. in the Republican circles here in Franklin County. Well, well, they did say it's a it's a women's party, but they did say that you know the guys could could, could still well, come. So. <laughs> uh, uh, Representative Dave Charlet's wife is going, and he just asked if he could come with his wife. I mean, so mm -hmm. it's being a gentleman. Um, we have a Winchester City Council meeting coming up tomorrow, Valentine's Day. Uh, I'm sure they're thrilled that they have this going on, but it's pretty early in the day. I think it's at 5 or 5.30, um, so sh they should be done in time to go out on their Valentine's dates. Um, so so we have that, and then also Hive Notes is not going to be tonight, Monday night. It's going to be Tuesday night. So oh. tomorrow night, 7 p.m., Sugar Lime Blue will be here with, with our host, Olivia Hires. Um, so check them out. Uh, they're more of a um, Celtic folk. So, you know, we've had a, a good variety of, of acts on already on um, on Hive Notes, and we're booked, I think, through April. So we've had country and, and rock and kind of some punk. and A lot of musical so, skill here in Franklin yeah, County. Yeah, lots of artists. And um, hopefully in the very near future, and if you know any artists or if you are an artist and you want to come be on a segment with us, we're going to, to start featuring an artist um, on the Monday morning show as well. Um, we have coming up on the 27th, um, Mark Ledbetter is going to be oh, with good. us. Uh, unfortunately, he's not going to be doing his art. He does beautiful woodwork. Um, he makes bowls and, and different things. So, But he, he's so involved in his own work and then civically engaged that he just hasn't had time to work on his own art. But Arts and L's is coming up, and I think this is the third year for oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's coming up in March, so we're going to have him on a couple of times, on the 27th and I think again on the 6th. Um, I believe it's March 14th. Uh, this is, is quite Arts a show, that Arts and Ales. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they've got two great music I'm acts. I'm salivating. And um, he said they don't have the lineup yet for, for the ale, for the craft beer. Uh, but hopefully by the time he comes on on the 27th, they'll have that. Uh, so, um, you know, we're, as we move into spring, we're going to have lots of, lots of great events we always do um, coming up. Cowan, um, we're hoping to have someone on from, from Cowan. They're looking for, uh, you know, they have a great fall festival. It right. kind of has changed hands over the last couple of years. Um, the chamber used to be really involved, and I think they pulled away, and then the uh, the local business people and the people in Cowan took it over and have continued that. Well, the business that, council um, in Cowan uh, claims a longer history than the chamber of commerce. It Congress. certainly does, <laughs> yeah. And we need to have, um, uh, what's Pearson's name? The Joyce Brown? No. That's the, the mayor. The, the gentleman that's in charge of the... the um, why do you do this to me, Tina? Because you know his name, the Pearson home, the young man that runs the... All right, never mind, I'm going to confuse you. Dick. But That's anyway, uh, we'll, have, we'll have someone on, um, hopefully at some point, with, with the Cowan's um, business community that can come in and talk to us about that long history uh, and, and about the um, fall festival. The reason I bring that up, though, is they are um, they're looking for a community interest. So if you have an interest in... And seeing that continue and you want to volunteer or you have ideals, you want to be a vendor, please reach out to those people. They have, uh, you know, Cowan has a website that has their contact information. And, uh, you know, they, they're just trying to, to find out if this is something that's still feasible and to continue with it. And they need, um, you know, your input and your support to be able to do that. So. Yeah. You can, it's easy to reach people in Cowan. You just walk into City Hall <laughs> or just walk the streets because uh, these people take their town seriously and they're out and about. It, so. And I'm going to find this person's name because I feel silly for sitting here and, and saying it. Is it Jared? You keep asking me, <laughs> Tina. I'm not going to answer you. I know that you know. For putting me on the spot. And there's going to be a little Yes, advantage. Jared Pearson <laughs> is, is the young man that I, that I know is involved in, in that, um, you know, in their... Their, Jared, their why didn't version, you say that? <laughs> their version of the of their you know their own chamber for their own um, business community there, and we um, talked to him before about the history, and it's what over a hundred years that this has been going. It's yes. a very long yeah. time. They've got some really cool documents. Um, we'd like to get them in here to talk about that and do not just a not just this day in history, but we really want to um, hopefully start having a, a whole segment dedicated to the history of Franklin County. So. Some great things coming up. We're still working the kinks out as we've moved our studio. And and uh, so just hang in there, and we appreciate you being here. And I'm done now. <laughs> you can go and drink your coffee. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I think she's finished asking me questions, so that means I can go now, too. <laughs>
<laughs> so thank you very much for being here with us uh, this day, this moment, this time, and look forward to seeing you again.